Hey, what's up, folks, and welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noah Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit. And joining me every week is, is Pedro. What's going on, everybody? I'm Pedro Ruiz, creative tech here at Adafruit. And every week, we come to share 3D print projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects. <laughs> Let's jump right into this week's coupon code. It is Cyclops. So if you want to get anything in the Adafruit shop, be sure to use coupon code Cyclops at checkout and get you 10% off whatever you got. We also have some freebie deals. If you go to adafruit.com slash free, you can see that we have some really nice deals going on. Let's go ahead and go to the website. Make sure that's running. Yeah. So for orders that are $99 or more, you will get a free Perma Proto half size breadboard. It's really nice. And then for orders that are 200 or more, you get the Perma Proto and free shipping from UPS, continental US only. And then for orders that are $2.99 or more, you get all that, plus a Circuit Playground Express. Excellent. So check those out. Um, and these things will get automatically added to your cart, so you don't have to worry about stuff. That's right. I don't think there's any way to remove them. Right. <laughs> cool. All right. So back over to the coupon code, Cyclops. Let's do real quick um, housekeeping. We've got uh, same-day delivery in New York City. So if you are in, in New York City, you need your stuff now and it's in stock, you can get it that same day you order it. So check out the site for um, those shipping options. We've got a newsletter that happens once a week. This is a great way to find out what's the new stuff because there's so much content out there. This will get sent to your inbox. You can subscribe to it and you won't get spammed because you are the one opting into it. So go to adafruit.com slash newsletter. That's the one. Pretty simple. Circuit Python meetings happen every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. It's a live stream that happens in the Discord chat room. Segue into the Discord chat room. We are hanging out in there. It's a 24 seven chat where you can get project help. You can share stuff, chat with a community. We're hanging out there too. We're in the live broadcast chat room. Howdy everybody. Pedro's gonna do some quick shout outs while I make sure everything's still running. Shout out to everybody in the YouTube chat. We've got Sam, Balmer, we've got Stomper, one to one. We've got Thomas Veach hanging out. He actually ordered one of the orange Halloween M4s last night. Awesome. Shown it's that really off. rare. It looks We're pretty cool. We're not going to do that anymore. It's limited time, so that is a special one. And for the folks that are on Facebook, I just hit the live button. So we're live. What? Hello. We're going to run through the... <laughs> Over on the Discord, we got the awesome John Sampson hanging out. Hey, John. We got some cool stuff to share well from John. as Troy Gar and Dewey. Dewey Wester. <laughs> Dewey Wester. Yeah. Dewey Wester. Dewey Wester, maybe. Hello and welcome. Thank you for all. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Yeah. Cool. Um, let's Better see. Find Facebook. Yep. You are. Yeah, Facebook is good. Okay. Uh, Facebook is special. I have to hit a button in order for Facebook to go. It always messes up with the system. Uh, I have to kick it. Okay. So hello, everybody. We said hello 50 times. Let's jump into the project. You want to do that? This week's project oh, yeah. is on the Adafruit Learn system, so let's hop on over there. Check it out. This is a fun Halloween M4-based project, and you can check out the YouTube video. It gives you a little rundown of the project. So this is a little candy bowl that we found at Target, and <laughs> this candy bowl is... Out of stock. It's, I had a... Where did it go? There it is. I got it from Target. You can order it online if it's in stock. Um, our store doesn't seem to have it in stock, so hopefully... Uh, your area has it, but this is really neat. It's, it's, it's fairly giant. Let me bring it out, actually. Why not? Let's bring it over here. So yeah, it has a, a mechanical eye that kind of opens. You might have seen this from those doorbells a couple years ago. We, this thing's like perfectly fitted for an eye. So we figured, hey, why don't we stuff the Halloween M4 in there? And here she is. So it's fairly big. Now you could 3D print this, but it's pretty massive. And for the price, that's pretty much the price of a spool of filament. This thing's huge. It's meant to be candy bowl. And there's lots of inside, uh, lots of space inside. So it, are, so it has that mechanical eye. We ripped it out and we put our Halloween in there. You have some, uh, you have a built-in speaker, so it, it has um, sound effects. And the way to trigger it is it has a little hidden IR sensor right there, which is really nice. Let's go ahead and turn it on. There's an on-off switch already built in, so you can actually use that to turn off and on our little buddy here, the Halloween M4.0. So this is running the M4i code, so it's completely customizable. 
when you purchase your Halloween, it already comes with the code. You do not need to know programming or Arduino or even CircuitPython. It just does this right out of the box. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a Halloween stock and we're going to set it up with this code here that was uh, coded by actually John Sampson who's in the chat room and Lamar uh, Lady Ada also helped in and uh, tweaked some of the touch stuff. So these little the teeth here, they're actually little touch pads. So if I touch this one, it'll change the animations sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, I might have put some older code in here. So well, that's, that's a good segue into actually setting one up. So that's what it does. It, uh, it cycles through uh, four different LED animations. So you have this really nice kind of fading color animation. You have this heart beating animation that looks really nice. And then you have uh, a rainbow. Oh, it's starting to work again, sweet. So you have this rainbow uh, animation that looks really nice. Now the Halloween M4 has uh, the NeoPixels built in, they're side lit, so wherever you kind of put it on, it's gonna illuminate the background really nice. So you get these super cool effects. Let's see if I can get the, there you go. And then that's the color that kind of fades through. So it'll automatically fade through, and then you can come in there and touch those if you want, which is really nice. So it has that lens right here, that plastic lens. We just fitted that on top. And you have access to the micro USB port there if you want to recharge the battery. Uh, which is, is built in the inside there. Okay, and then uh, you have the option to either use our acrylic laser cut um, lens holder or you could 3D print one as well. So if you're thinking, well, I don't have a 3D printer, not a problem. We made a little paper template that you can press fit in there and these little holes here is where you can put those little nylon standoffs. You actually sell a kit of these nylon standoffs. It's a great way to elevate your PCB and just stick it to things. So uh, this little guy is made out of foam core. You just cut it out. I printed it out on a 2D paper, so we have a nice PDF that you can print out and you can cut this out with a template. So uh, these are two of them that I made. And I have this hole in the center here to pass wires through. Wires like the battery connector and the slide switch. So if you don't have a 3D printer, you have no excuse because you have a paper template. Haha. -ha. All right. So let's jump into the learn guide and take a look at our homepage here. So this one just covers what I basically just said. <laughs> we have a link to the, uh, to the candy bowl that you can get from Target. And then this right here shows you all the, all the bits and pieces that we got. So I got a, a battery extension cable. I got this pretty beefy battery. It's rechargeable. So when you plug in the USB, your Halloween will charge it. Uh, it will charge that battery, which is really nice. We got that plastic lens as well that really um, makes it look bubbly. And it has some nice uh, reflections making it look like it's wet. Like it's a wet highball, as you can see there. Right. Cool. Jumping back over. Okay. And uh, let's see what other product. Yeah, this little uh, kit of nylon standoffs, they're the M25 size. These are going to work with just about all the Adafruit stuff. So your circuit playground, your feathers. Yeah, these are great. So pick these up if you haven't already. They have a couple of different sizes. I have those listed here on exactly which ones you need, I believe. And throughout the guide, we, we, I tell you which ones you need. So that's the home page. Let's jump into the software part. So this is really interesting. Instead of having to uh, give you guys a link to the, to the repo and to download Arduino and then download the libraries, Adafruit boards have this special firmware that allows you to drag and drop a file without having to install Arduino, like I said. And that, that'll automatically restart the, um, the board with new software. So we're going to do that right now. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's just give you a one-to-one -one how it works. All right, so this is actually the new Halloween. Pedro, you can show that one off. So that's the new Halloween. It's a limited edition. Um, it's uh, orange colored. So the silk screen is uh, special. I'm going to just open up the... Uh, Let's see if I can get yeah. that to focus. No, I'll get it, don't worry. We're going to focus here. OK, we got it focused. Excellent. So it's got this really nice orange color. Uh, why don't you show them what it originally looks like with the black oh. here. And of course, this is the Halloween M4. Last year, we had the Halloween M0. So what's different about this one? Well, we have a really nice display. This is like a retina display that Apple makes, right? It's, uh, you want to get technical, it's 240 by 240 pixels, which sounds small, but it looks really great. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and plug her in to the USB there. Uh, the old one, right? The black no, the new one. We want to set that one up. Yeah, so uh, you plug it in through USB, has native USB. 
it boots up right away. This is what the, literally it came in the, came in the mail right now. And this is my first time looking at it. Uh, so this display is awesome because you can see it at all the different angles. If you look at our Halloween M0, it's got a little bit of a cheaper display where it starts looking weird when you look at it at another angle. So I think going forward, Adafruit's gonna start using IPS displays on everything, which is really great because then you can see it at all those different angles. It's really nice. Okay, so what do you do if you want this new code? There, there's LEDs, but they're not turning on. They're not flashing, right? Well, let's go ahead and see there's a reset button. Double tap it twice. There you go. Now the LEDs turn on and they go green. The green lets you know, hey, I'm happy and I'm ready to get some new code. So let's jump in over to our desktop. We're going to go into the tunnel view real quick. But I'll jump out of tunnel view and then jump into our finder window. So this little guy shows up as a USB drive. It's going to work on Linux, Macs, and Windows. So you can see here that there's some files here. And it says Halloween M4 boot. That lets you know it's ready to get some new code. So once you download this file over here called eyes underscore touch dot uf2, you just download that. And then you drag it and drop it right into that USB drive. So let's go ahead and do that. So I have my, UF, my eyes underscore uf2. I'm just going to drop it into here. Is that doing it? What's my Mac doing? Does it let me do it? Yeah, I'll go. There it goes. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. one of those Mac things. All right, so I dragged and dropped it, uh, Mac willing, and then uh, it'll just automatically reset itself. Now it disappeared, and it's going to restart itself as Circuit Pi. So now you have the Circuit Pi drive. Here, you have a couple different files. If you want to go all crazy and create your own graphics, you can open up the Hazel folder and modify these bitmap images. But these images are what the eyes are using to. To, to make it look like that. So these are just bitmap images. You can use uh, uh, photo editing software if you want to create your own graphics, but you don't have to. You can also do like colors and things and that's all documented um, in our learn guide as well. We have a customization um, piece that we can, uh, we can show you guys. But for now, let's go ahead and jump back over to the demo and actually see, oh, it's been running the whole time. Duh, because I set it up that way. <laughs> so uh, go ahead and touch the pads, Pedro. You can see how, uh, yeah, all of them. I had touched one, two, three. I go through them all. Yeah. That was the heart beating one. I really like that one. Go ahead and get closer so we're in focus. There we go. So again, you have complete control over uh, the eyes. If you want to make it uh, like a spookier eye, you can make the, the white sclera um, different colored. Um, and they're just bitmaps. So you just drop those into the USB drive, and there you go. So this is awesome. This was uh, originally coded by John Sampson, who's in the chat room. And if you are a experienced programmer, you can uh, build the code from source, because it is open source. And I got a nice credit to John right there. You can check out his GitHub and check out his fork. But Lady Ada brought that into the main fork and uh, tweaked a little bit of the touchpad stuff so that it's a little bit more reliable, which is great. So you can, hear, you can see here, um, if you want to build it from source, this walks you through how to install the Arduino IDE, all the, um, the libraries that are dependent on, on uh, running the code, and you can do all that. If you're an experienced programmer, you probably already have all this set up, which is awesome. So you can just reference these and make sure you got all your libraries set up. But if you don't know anything about the code, don't even worry about it. Just turn it on, drag and drop, <laughs> it's ready to go. You can focus on crafting, which is really cool. And the customization stuff is all here in this subpage called configurable, configurable settings. So you can see here, it's just a text file that you open up and you can change the size of the eyes. Let's, let's do that, let's go ahead and do that. I was about to say, let's go ahead and actually demo because it's so cool that you're able to change the shape of the iris so you can make it like a slit. Maybe do like a dragon or a snake. Ooh, let's, do, let's do a slit. Let's see if that one is supported. So eyes and sh sizes and shapes. This okay. one gives you a nice graphic, gives you an idea of what are all these numbers, what are they doing? So this one is called split pupil radius. I'm going to pop that into the file. So let's go back to my little finder. It's called config.i. So I'm going to right click, open with text editor. And you could do the same in a Windows if you have a Windows um, text editor. I'm just going to make the text big for now so y'all can see it. And these are the default sort of parameters that are set up, right? I radius. It's got a number, I index. You can choose different colors and stuff for the individual pieces of the eye, the pupil, the eyelids, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go ahead and pop in a new one here. I just want to keep those spacings the same. So I drop that in. 
and you got to make sure that your guy is in those parentheses. A little bit of a code, but not too bad. Just make sure you're following it. I'm going to put a little comma there. So now basically I'm saying, hey, I want my split pupil radius to be 60. Let me hit save. And then Pedro's going to hit that reset button once. Yep. It's like, where's that reset button? There it is. It's going to load. Hopefully with a split. We got a oh, split. Oh, wow, it iris. is. It's so split. Cool. Yes, and you have control over the, the number. That's just the default 60 that I have. But uh, you could change that up if you want a little bit more slittier. <laughs> slittier? If you wanted more of a narrow slit. <laughs> uh, that looks great. Actually, I'm going to leave it like that. That's so cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And you could change the pupil. Again, all that stuff. The iris, the sclera, the eyelids themselves can be different graphics if you want them to be. You which can is also awesome. Turn on, I think, the gaze, right? There's a parameters for changing the gaze. Yeah. And uh, we have a bunch of different graphics and text that you can play with. Let me go over to, um, let's see, I think we have them. You probably would find them in the actual GitHub repo, which is not too bad. Let me hit over there. Here's our GitHub repo, the eyes directory. You can download it there, a direct download as well. But I want to show you guys, if you click on the eyes folder, let me jump back over. No, you're good. And then these are all the different eyes that we have. Demon eyes, skull so reflection, uh, hypno red. Pre-configured yeah. uh, graphics and code that'll uh, yeah. go along with that. Let me do the hypno red. As you can see here, they're just bitmaps. So I'm gonna take the iris bitmap. I'm gonna download that directly to my CircuitPy drive, right into the hazel. I'm just gonna say iris, hit save. I'm gonna say replace. And then let me double check. Yep, that downloaded. And now Paige is going to re re uh, hit the reset button. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's see if our hypno eye happens. Holy crap, wow. it happened. Yeah, so now it has a bit of a, a spiral. And you can see that I, the split kind of distorts the hypno eye. So I'm going to actually change it back. Um, you can really spend hours here uh, customizing to your heart's content, which is great because we want people to focus on that if that's their cup of tea. Um, so let's get rid of this guy here, this, uh, this line that had the split pupil. Just delete it, hit save, wait a second, let that save go through. Now we're going to hit reset. Ooh, that's a little bit better. You can see how it has like the more hypnotic eyeness to it. Okay. I also want to change the radius of the eye and I want to be a little bit bigger here. That's actually the, would it be the iris? Yeah, it would be the iris radius. Hmm. We want to go like one, 140 maybe. Let me go back to this guy. Yeah, maybe 140, hit save. And then Paige is gonna hit the reset button. So the iteration is pretty quick, as you can see. I don't this have to upload, I just hit the reset button. And there you go. That might have made it a little bit bigger. Uh, it looks like it made it a little smaller. Did it really? Yeah, the uh, pupil. It looks pretty cool though, because it definitely matches the swirling effect yeah. that we got on the uh, hypno yeah. graphics there. So you Sweet. can see more of it. Yeah, so definitely play around with those numbers. And we have a lot of uh, and again, this graphics is, you can play with. This is why being able to iterate so fast is so important. You're able to, in almost real time, visualize what it's actually going to look like. Yeah. It, it's really key to be able to fastly iterate so you can get your, mm -hmm. your, your values right how you so want you actually it. focus on designing uh, the eye that's going to fit your costume or prop. Yeah, very cool. And uh, having those built-in LEDs now in the back is so much more valuable. It makes it more compact because really we were actually going to add a strip inside there and that was just oh going to <laughs> complicate it a little bit because of the way that we had to mount everything. Right. Uh, now, we don't think, have to. It's yeah. all in one. It's great. Mm -hmm. And there's way more stuff that we hit. We're barely scratching the surface of yeah. what's on the board. There's an accelerometer. There's a light sensor. Mm -hmm. We are using the cap touch, which is really awesome. Again, shout out to John Sampson for, for getting mm -hmm. that working. You can attach uh, speakers to this. Um, yeah, it has a built-in amplifier, so you can have sound effects going on. Mm -hmm. 
Very, very cool. Rechargeable in the battery. It is rechargeable. So when you plug it in, it's going to recharge your battery if you have a battery uh, mm -hmm. hooked up to it. Uh, Stomper121 is asking, can you pair two of these to have them in sync with each other? There is a guide on how to do that. There is a way I to believe, do that. Um, although... Although you probably just want the monster mask. Yeah, let me if, go you, if you haven't seen the monster mask. So many people wanted to have two eyes that we had to make it a product. So the yeah, monster mask is two eyes and it's basically the exact same code base just with two of them. Mm -hmm. So you, if you have not seen these, this is definitely what we would recommend going with instead of trying to get two of these, it's gonna be cheaper yes. and it's gonna allow you to uh, actually break these apart if you don't want them to be at this distance so you can bring them uh, closer together or bring them apart. Yeah. You do have these uh, little ports in the back which allow you to connect them back together using the little nine pin cable. We have a couple projects showing how to do that. We made some antennas, um, antennas. antennas. we made uh, uh, Cappy from Mario mm -hmm. and a put couple of skulls. others. We, we put it in skulls skull and uh, van, uh, made a ventriloquist dummy that you can put them inside of. Boop Tons the nose. of masks. There's so many hidden like little features. Yeah, you can boop Ooh. the nose, so <laughs> it'll activate the eye. Or it has a voice has changer. Eyes. Yeah, you voice can, changer oh, code man, that amazing. you can have it run Go with the last PM <laughs> microphone, with the speakers. You have an audio jack on the top here. Uh, of course, rechargeable. You have buttons on here so you can like actually switch through. You know what the best uh, part is? What's up? It's in stock. Oh yeah, go ahead and pick <laughs> that one up. <laughs> it's in stock. So that's awesome. Very mm -hmm. cool. So uh, eyes, 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 eyes. If it's eyes. <laughs> yeah, they were in stock earlier. Uh, these are quite popular, so <laughs> they go very fast. <laughs> yeah, they were. They had like a hundred of them in stock. Yeah, and they're all gone now. Sorry. <laughs> so it, I know it's the running. Uh, it's the running joke. joke. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brent in the chat room is pointing that yeah, we have fifty-four monster masks in stock. So if you do want to pair these together, definitely consider getting those instead of just one. Yeah. Super swanky. Let's go there. This and then camera. Yanni was saying uh, that we could, or if we can, put these behind the mechanical iris that came with the candy bowl. We tried. That's right. It's it just did the, not. The fit. sizing is just not yeah. right for it, so it'd have to be redesigned so that it has accommodate space for it. Um, that's probably something we want to do next year. Uh, we really wanted to add like fog. Uh, we wanted to yeah. incorporate the IR sensor, but we it, everyone's always crunched with time, mm -hmm. and uh, I. I it's really good to kind of say that, like, don't take on something too big, like get something at least working enough. And for mine, my goal was to, hey, can I get that eye in there um, with and without 3D printing? And I don't want to, uh, I don't, I actually didn't cut anything here. So there's no grinding or cutting. I just pop, I just unscrewed. This is a really nice candy bowl because it's got screws for everything. Um, and what you're paying for isn't just the electronics that are already in there. Uh, you do have a built-in speaker. So I could have wired that up to here, but I have time to get that working. And you could use the battery pack as well. I am using that slide switch because it's already in there. Um, yeah. And then having access to USB was really nice. So this just worked out really well um, because the bowl is designed for an eye mm -hmm. and it just happens to fit in there nicely. And this doesn't really come out. It's kind of press fitted in there, but it has like this lip that keeps it in place. So let's jump back over to the learn guy and actually look at how the mount is, uh, is set up. So we got our software. We did a nice little... Um, a nice little demo. This section here, it talks about the teardown. So I walk you through unscrewing the bottom, gutting out the, the, uh, the motors in there, because there's two motors in there that was running the, uh, the mechanical eye. And then here they are, the bits themselves. So I actually have them saved. I might use them next year for something else, but it's really cool. So uh, you can really kind of piece apart, take apart that eye mechanism and kind of see how it's working. Here's the gutted base. It's really spacious inside, and here's the bottom. There's not much going on in there. There's one little circuit board that does the built-in sound effects. That's about it. And you can zoom in here to get a better look. Here's how the speaker is mounted. Now, one thing that really drove me bananas is that uh, the wiring was sort of messy. So what I did is I went in there and put in these silicone ribbon cable wires because they're a lot more flexible and they are a little bit more tidier, so that's what I did there. So again, this circuit board is the one that comes with the candy bowl, and all it does is run that motor and uh, play the sound effects that are built into it. No USB, none of that fancy cool stuff. It's what it is, but uh, again, you can 
reuse any of these components, like the speaker. And here's the little IR sensor. Uh, it's also mounted with a screw. So I was really happy about that. The, uh, the PCB, though, is like mounted with a little bit of hot glue, which is kind of interesting. Other than that, that's about it. So that's the, the piece gutted. So let's look at our paper template. So um, I put this together pretty, pretty quickly, but you can download this uh, PDF and print it out on your 2D paper. It's uh, designed to fit your, your 8 by 11 sheet of paper. And uh, cutting it out of foam board, uh, you can stick it with some glue stick onto a piece of foam core and then just cut it out with a hobby knife. I'm going to be careful with that, of course. And uh, I did it, uh, I'm not the best cutter. I don't have super awesome dexterity. I'm not really good at drawing. So this took me like maybe four times to cut because I really wanted the press fitting to look really good or to fit really good. Uh, so it's, it, it took me a little bit, <laughs> just four, four attempts. But it's, it's nice because uh, you could just hot glue it in place once you have your, uh, your kind of hole here. And uh, it, really what you're looking at is these four holes, right? These are what's gonna hold the actual PCB in place. So whether you cut this out of foam core or cardboard, um, just make sure that your holes are as, as good as you can get them. A little bit of room for leeway here. Yeah, and then this covers the exact stall, uh, the size of those standoffs that I'm talking about. The screws as well, the size of the screws are all listed here, so you know exactly which screws to use because there's quite a few of them. Okay, if you don't have a 3D printer, like of course you could do the, the template. We also have a lens holder. It's gonna keep that bubbly lens in place. This one's laser cut acrylic, and we sell this as a little as a little kit, and it has its own screws that you can use in this. So it works really well, the press fits on there. A lot of mounting holes on the, on the hollow wing that you can choose from, so you could zip tie it if, to something if you'd like as well. Heading on onto the 3D printing part, it's just two pieces. You got the main kind of um, mount that gets press fitted into the eye socket and then you have this little lens holder. So that's about it. I have the Fusion 360 files as well as the step files if you want to use them in different CAD stuff. And if you uh, have some CAD 3D printing modeling experience, you can download our 3D models of the boards. So you can make some really stellar designs. So check them out. They're um, in different file formats like step and STL and other good ones, not just Fusion. Yeah, and that one has all the built-in uh, components. Um, like the side lit LEDs and uh, the new updated display. Yeah, just a couple things. Not, not, not really that many things got moved around, but maybe one or two things. Looking at the lens holder, I just walk through setting it up, which screws you need to install it. It just gets um, screwed in through these two mounting holes. Same thing with the PCB mount, it's very similar. We're using some taller standoffs and they go on the outside there. This page is going to walk you through installing it. It gets press fitted from the inside. It just pops in there. It has a press fit. My battery is the 4400 milliliter. It's pretty honking. It's going to last hopefully all night. Probably all night. Definitely more than three hours. Because remember Phil saying the monster mask, you can get three hours, just about three hours from a 500 milliamp. This is 4400. So you can do the math there real quick. Uh, this one's a little special one. So. Um, I created my own um, little right angled headers. This is, a, this is like advanced now. We're soldering at this point. <laughs> we got a, an on off switch. You don't have to use it. You could just disconnect it if you want, but I wanted to be able to use that on and off switch. So I show you which pins to solder to. And then I have these little right angled pins that I created myself so that uh, it has a nice flush profile. Yeah, and then uh, I have a, a hole in the center. What's that for? That's for actually pulling those wires through, the battery connector and the slide switch connector. I'll show you where in the back here, the hollow wing has these little holes, these little headers, where, uh, where you can add wires. You don't have to solder into them, you just kind of plug it in, which is nice. Same thing with the battery, it has a battery port right there that you just plug in. So again, you can skip that if you'd like. You don't need to, uh, to have the on off switch, but if you do use it, make sure that the built-in slide switch is turned on, and I can show you that right here. There is a slide switch right here that is built in. You want to make sure that's on because when you have this, uh, the enable and ground pins, which controls the on off, uh, the enable, um, you want to have the, the thing actually turned on there. So there we go. Cool. 
and you have the on off switch there. This is a little baby battery here. This is like a 420. I'll probably give you like two hours, maybe more. But yeah, cool. Okay. I want that. All right, back over to the learn guide. So uh, yeah, w once you have that uh, mount installed, all I had to do is pull those wires through and just plug it into the um, into the battery port and those those pins on the headers. Then you can use a screwdriver to uh, to fasten this guy into the little standoffs. You have your accessible USB port, and then you can put the uh, the bottom back in there. Um, yeah, it's, just make sure you have your screws. Um, and there you go. There's the slide switch. Uh, you can the the photo that I showed shows it that it's in the light position. There's also a sensor position which will turn on the actual circuit, the IR sensor stuff. I actually took out the batteries because they're so annoying the, the sounds, oh, but they yeah. were kind of funny. They're like iPods. It's super loud. And it's super loud. And now you make sure you want to test it out and stuff. I have a little part here going beyond the scope. You could go all crazy and, and then, like I said, integrate the speaker, create your own sound effects, um, control some motors and, and maybe uh, a fan that will blow some, some smoke out or something like that. You can have external NeoPixels as well. Um, so if you wanted to light up the entire bowl, you could do that mm -hmm. as well. Plenty of room inside the bowl for other stuff. And I think I might revisit this next year with some more cool stuff. Maybe we'll have a spider actually come out or something. That'd be cool. I mean, neat. A hand yeah, comes out da, 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 and mm -hmm. goes back in. And we have these really cool UV NeoPixels as well. So you can have like a oh, black yeah. light effect, have like neon lighting or something mm -hmm. that's triggering something else. Yeah. Lots of cool ways that you can enhance this. Uh, maybe next year we'll try to fit the mechanical uh, little components that it came with, the iris on there. Yeah. Cool. Let's check over the chats. Sure. Uh, Tim Gardner is saying that he uh, got a pair and put it inside one of those foam mechanic ends. It's hilarious nice. seeing people's <laughs> reactions. Yeah, so there's lots of uh, different ways you can stuff these in already made stuff, or you can build it yourself. Yep, yep, yep. Lots of different uses. Sweet. All right, well, that's the, this week's project. Hope you guys like it. Um, I hope it inspires you to kind of think, how do I get this done quickly? <laughs> that's, that's really the thing. Yeah, segueing into, I I'm guess, that clip sense. Quick. Yeah, uh, a lot of people were saying, oh, it's not going to give us enough time for Halloween. This is what we started like almost two months ago doing all the yeah. Halloween projects. These have been, in, these, these were released in September 6th or something like that, mm -hmm. September 7th, something like that. Yeah, so definitely keep in mind for next year, you need to start in September because we are practically in Christmas season now, no. already working on the Christmas projects, this is what cue the as Christmas evident year. by all of the no. stores that you go to now. Wait, there's still some Halloween stuff. Halloween stuff, like 60% off, they're trying to get rid of it already <laughs> well, to go. make room for all the, you know, trees oh, and man. as far as the eye no. can see. No, <laughs> not yet. Christmas is already here. Um, <laughs> my wife in yeah. the background saying, yay! Look at the giant Olaf. We've been it's listening like, to Christmas music for the past <laughs> two weeks, I think. <laughs> cool. So... Not cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like both holidays, so it's sort of that bittersweet thing. Well, you could always... Your aesthetic, if you like, you can, you can go the Nightmare Before Christmas route. Yeah, and that's just true. make everything gothy Christmas, which is great. <laughs> I think it's cool. All right, so there, there you go. That's why that eyeball was out of stock, huh? Oh man, I'm too late. <laughs> you can get it for next year. Uh, all right, It'll well, come back. We have a 3D model of the Halloween and <laughs> four. Yeah, uh, Stomper 21 was saying that, yeah, it was not in stock yesterday. Uh, no, it was. It's the timing, I know. I, yeah. I yep. checked it too. Your yesterday it wasn't, or my yesterday? Uh, yeah. It wasn't in stock, and it came up. in stock. Sorry. And then it was quickly out of stock. Yeah. yeah, I checked this morning. I was like, cool, I'm going to do the show. And I'm going to be like, it's in stock. And it wasn't. It's fine, though. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and jump into... Oh, hold on, one last thing. You could thing use the M0 here. You could totally use the M0 here. It's not going to have the LEDs, but you could totally use it. Mm -hmm. It'll just work right away. That, yeah. The mount is kind of universal to the, to the Halloween. I'm glad Lamar stuck with the same mounting holes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing that changed uh, from the older one is the JST position just slightly. Just so slightly. I did have to update some of the cases. They are up on the Thingiverse. They just added it as a new file, named it just M4. Cool. Uh, so you can still use that. Oh, here's actually the older one. Here's the M0 and you can kind of see the pixelation in there. Yeah. If you want to get that super crispiness, definitely go with the M. Double the resolution. Zero, or four, M4. M4. 
so cool. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, this will probably be the easiest way to set up a pumpkin. Uh, we have these little spikes. Uh, I did put them on the back here. Mm -hmm. You can just actually just <laughs> plop those right Stick it in. into the pumpkin. Right. So lots of different options for that. Even a foam one. I think a foam pumpkin is better. Yay. Yep. Shout outs to DigiKey for these. Super cool. <laughs> Grinch Christmas too. Yes. <laughs> yep. All right, let's go ahead and switch over to prototyping. What are you prototyping? Oh, don't forget the coupon code is Cyclops, so we can uh, quickly look at some stuff that are in stock, but we'll go back after our prototype, so check yeah. it out. All right, what are we prototyping? This week we're going to be taking a look at some hologram stuff. I think this one will be the better one. Maybe. Let's try it out. Let's try it out. Oh, yeah, yeah so I think that works. Yeah, so uh, Phil B came up with some really cool effects, doing like a Pepper's Ghost effect with the monster mask, which is where like you're getting reflections off of, uh, in this case, it was like the iPhone protectors. So what's going on here is you're getting the reflection from the screen, it's being projected onto there, or not projected, just reflecting. Mm -hmm. So you got these little cool, uh, little They're like plastic, prism, plastic? Uh, plastic folded prisms. Yeah. It has a little suction cup. It's just press fitted on top of the display. Mm -hmm. What display is this? This is the Pi Portal. It's an internet connected uh, display that you can display all sorts of stats, um, RSS feeds, mm -hmm. um, JSON feeds. Uh, re really great if you want to pull internet data and have it constantly uh, monitoring it. Yeah, so what it's we got, got here is this little graphic that's set up with these little four qu quadrants. So each one will reflect onto a little plastic here. Yeah, Blinka on there. We have like all uh, like an orthographic view of all of her sides there. So you can see like the back and the front sides and all that. And she has a little animation, a little tongue sticking out and blinking. So you could uh, so you imagine yeah. making like a crystal ball or having it as a notification system. Uh, so I 3D printed this little stand so you can vertically have that on there. And then added these little bearings so you can just uh, rotate this guy around so you can have like a cool... Uh, crystal ball effect. Uh, so I wanted to see if we could actually uh, automate, automate this. <laughs> so these really cool little reduction motors that Pyromony carries. I uh, wanted to make this nice and small and not have like a microcontroller on there to control the speed. So uh, had it go uh, automated on there. So we have a little wheel, Ninja Flex wheel, that's just rotating the entire guy there. Yeah, you see so, the ball bearing, if a skateboard ball bearing mm -hmm. um, that you can use. That can just press fits there. So it's incorporated into the mount. You, what you got to secure with some screws. Mm -hmm. And you're using the power boost to make this portable. Yeah, so we have a guide on that. Uh, that's a little bit more complicated, but we'll break it down uh, next week in having a nice little portable uh, pipe portal <laughs> <laughs> with the, I think the smallest little turntable that uh, we've made so far and making it automated yeah and we'll we'll create some cool graphics for you folks that you can play around with the floating head jellyfish we've seen those yeah isaac's working on a uh, nice little guide on how to make animations for this uh this is all like after effects uh so just going to try to find a more simpler way so everybody can have fun in making mm -hmm. nice little animations for this i think one of the coolest ones is like the medusa head because it looks like the crystal ball mm -hmm. so uh won't be like a, a prop specific. It'll just be like, you know, here's all the, the platform, the, the platform or the components that you can put together to add it to whatever themed prop or project you want to work on. Sweet. A cool little turntable. Yeah, holograms. Yeah. Very cool. And I think we're going to stock these pretty soon. Excellent. Yes, Gizmo. Definitely trying to. Uh, get a set that'll work on the gizmo for yeah. that. It's a little bit smaller, so we'll see. Yeah. I'm and I don't think the uh, GIF player works on it either. That's actually what we're using this uh, on the Pi Portal to play back these animations. Looks like Pi Portal is indeed in stock, so you can pick those up. Yeah, we have a couple. There's a bunch of awesome projects that you can check out as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely recommend doing that. You can click over here where it says see all guides, and you can see all the different lovely guides. One of those guides, you're gonna like this, you're gonna like it. It'll help you remember. Oh, did I not? Is it the Countin? Yes. <laughs> it's the Halloween. I, I think it's from Dave Estelle's. There's a Halloween countdown. 
now not so many. So this is really cool, just countdown. It is, I don't think it needs the internet. It's just like built in, I think. It's like, hey, hard coded to how many days um, or when your date, your target date is. So this could be uh, your birthday or upcoming trip or anniversary or whatever you have. And uh, you can add your own fonts. These fonts are being generated um, live so the thing changes every day. You can make it hourly based or anything like that and the graphics will just switch through them. So it's really nice. So it's a great project uh, for doing that sort of countdown. Maybe an advent calendar. Ah. So you could set that up. Really easy to, to do the code as well, drag and drop as well. Look at all these cool graphics that we made for you folks. Blinka and Cricket, <laughs> there's so many cool ones. I had a fun time um, doing that one. 111 days ago, <laughs> or whatever. Well, might as well say this is the, a Christmas countdown one now. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'll update the graphics. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this week's uh, Community Makes. Sure. Um, I wanted to do one last thing, oh, though. Go. It's a shop talk. Uh, so last, last week, we did... Oh, the cauldron? Yeah, so last week, um, we had the cauldron. The little Bluetooth cauldron, this guy here. Uh, let's go over this camera. There it is. So there's a little Bluetooth cauldron. And huge shout out to maker Melissa. She uh, made a, a, a color changing pumpkin. And uh, she used the NeoPixel hat, the BLE hat project. She used that code, tweaked a little bit of the, of the, of the pixel count and the, the pixel pin and made it run on the, on the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. So I'm gonna have my Circuit Playground Blue Fruit app. Let's go ahead and connect to it. It shows up as Circuit Pi. It's uh, got a battery in there, it's already on. Now I can do the controller, and instead of the color picker, we have the control pad. So now I have one, two, three, four different animations to play with. These are using the fancy LED library, it's so fancy. Uh, and this is like a nice fiery kind of effect, and it's definitely different. The hat had, <laughs> the hat was linear, so you, the animations came across this way, but now that it's circular, you kind of get this kind of siren effect. You can use the up and down arrows to like accelerate it and decelerate it. You can probably go all the way down to stop. There it is, stopped. This is all circuit Python, so when you plug it in, the USB, the code shows up and you can modify it. So this is using the new um, BLE libraries. So just a quick project update that uh, it works really well. Very cool. What should I leave it on? Another cool thing, if, if, if you got one of these things, the, the Blue Fruit app also works with this, with this watch. So now I can go to the color picker and choose palette. Now I got some palettes to choose from. So if you don't want to use your your phone, I guess you could use this watch if you have one. Whoa, what was that? I think I found a bug. Oh, nope, it's back. You all sell that, right? On <laughs> page two to three. Yeah, so this is pretty neat. It, it works pretty good, pretty reliable. I think it works up to how many? 30 feet away or mm -hmm. meters or something like that. Check the learn guide. Don't quote me on that. But hey, I just wanted to show you guys that, um, the, the code. So let's go to that code. <laughs> uh, it's going to be in the hat. I think it's just BLE hat. And there it is. Software page is over here. And you can download the, uh, the code down here. All I had to change was the number of LEDs from 60, change that to 10. Instead of board.d13, I just put board.neopixel in caps, and that seemed to work well. You have control over the, the the rainbow colors, they're all listed here, what color's what. It's using RGB, so you can play around with that to get your desired color. And there's up to four of them here, you can see. Very neat, so check it out. That is using this code on last week's project to make a cauldron that has some um, animations, not just standard colors. We also did a, an update to this guy. This is uh, the bigger cauldron. It isn't just scaled up, it's literally redesigned to fit uh, the, the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit that's in there. I have a Stemma speaker on the bottom. In order to fit the Stemma speaker, I had to rework the, um, the bottom mount. 
Um, so I had to solder uh, these guys in because the alligator clips are just a little bit too chunky to fit down here because the cover has to cover this whole area. And so what I have is uh, the stem speaker on the bottom there, and I increase the height here of the, uh, yeah, of the, it's kind of hard to see, but it, I increase the height here so the PCB is up away from the bottom so I have enough room for the JST connector there of the speaker. And boy, is it loud. So let's go ahead and plug it in. I have a little 2200 milliamp battery. I guess I could just fit it in there. It has a built-in um, battery port, so I could plug that in. That's my sound effect. I'm sorry I don't have any dry ice uh, today. But you it can sounds imagine. like you do. Yeah, but you can imagine. Oh, maybe I need a smaller battery. It didn't um, close all the way, but that's fine. So now I can add some candy in here too and have this repeating effect there, this repeating sound effect. And you can change the sound effect as well if you want. And uh, that's, that's it really, that's my update. So if you want to make this bigger one, you can incorporate the speaker and the battery in here. Yeah, you can see it's just too, just a, just a hair too tall, so I need to use a different battery. But no worries, you can just plug it in through USB. We'll do that later, I think it's good. Because <laughs> I'd have to like snake it in there. I do have access to it, you can see it right there. And uh, yeah, it's, it's in there. I'm just gonna kind of thread it in there. Like that. Then you could take the top off to get it in there. How are we on time? We're low on time. All right, so there you go. I added the speaker and I, I made it, made sure that uh, I accommodate space here in the new mount. So um, yeah, so I got that going on. So that's my jumbo cauldron update. Yay. Now we can do community this makes. Week's community makes. Yeah, so it's a time lapse. That entitled, untitled goose game has been making the round, so you had to make a goose. <laughs> so of course it's been 3D printed now. <laughs> We've actually not played the game yet. <laughs> yeah, I haven't played it yet. We just watched like the, um, the what is the game? Let's play speed, or yeah, speed, speed runs. Speed runs of it, and it looks yeah. super cool and super fun. So this is 3D printed uh, different parts for the colors on there, and we have one of those little small neodymium magnets. So you can hold your keys or do the lake and the rake or have it hold a what some people are using it for as a knife holder. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go to that? Yeah. Uh, let me load it. But it's a super cool oh print. It looks so knife. cute. <laughs> if you go over to the overhead or any of those, yeah, any of those angles, they all look so cute the way that he comes out. He has his little, you know, his little turned head and all that on there. So you can print this in as a single print for, um, uh, you know, single extruders, or you can even have it do, uh, there's models out there to do um, dual extrusion on it. And these little magnets on there, we're just gluing those strong. on in there. Yeah, it's pretty strong. So you can have it hold any metal objects and have it be a, <laughs> a helpful goose. Helpful duck. Yeah, He's still uh, this charming. Yeah, this isn't. That's not metallic. <laughs> or just have it, have it as a key holder. It's a cool uh, little Did simple you... print. Did you scale it up at all? Is that no, the 100 percent size? This is 100 percent okay. size, uh, specifically because of you know mm, we're sizing it to what the the magnet that the uh, this is designer. not painted. The legs can pop out. Yeah, so the legs come off. Oh wow! Yeah. So you can actually just um, great this have is... that all separated like yeah. that. The only thing that's glued on there is the the, uh, the magnet in the bill. Okay. But the uh, tell me about the eyes. How did you get the eyes? Yeah, so the eyes are just a piece of 175 filament. No It way. does include like a head? model for it. There but you can just use 175 millimeter oh. filament. Uh, Give me a minute. It's a really good technique if you want to have like little rivets or if you are having a hinge, you want to print there like these tiny little parts for it, which, you know, th he does include, but there's no way the printer's going to have, be able to resolve that. So it's yeah, a really clever way to just a piece of 175 that filament. Great. Use that trick dozens of times. Like we were saying for mm -hmm. hinges or like rivets, yeah. you can like, uh, um, burn like the end, so it'll be nice and flat. Make rivets. Make rivets that way, or just press fit it in there because of the, uh, it's not gonna come yeah. out and unless it's not you obvious, push on it. The, uh, the size of the filament is the 175 diameter, not the 285 diameter. Exactly, yeah. 
Although we have used the 285 and it just depends on the size of whatever hinge or whatever rivet you want to make. What's funny is he, 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 he's not really well balanced. He kind of needs something in his bill. Actually, no, it's fall. just oh, because okay. of, no, no, he is well balanced. It's I because of the, I, I didn't fit the feet in there far enough when I first tested it out, but yeah, he balances pretty well. I'm surprised on that. Cool. Um, obviously it's going to depend on what the weight of your keys are and all that, but it's an excellent little themed key holder. Yeah, you Super could do cute. so many things with this. Um, for example, you could use if then, then that to like when you get an email or something it goes. Hark! Hark! <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I was gonna IOT say, oh, duck goose. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe if you uh, split this in half and have it like you know be a coil. Has a USB coming out of its butt. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good, no, it's a good segue into support materials. Oh, right. I did have to use sports on the bottom there. I think the way that it's angled, I don't know if it's like the print, ready to go to print as is, but you do want to angle it with this butt down like that so that the neck uh, prints upwards without needing any supports. But the uh, butt, unfortunately, is going to need it. That's fine. <laughs> See that there? And we can take a look at, there's been so Seems many popular. makes of this. 41 makes posted. Yeah, nice, easy. Simple, oh, that's, he's, really he's cool holding theme. a Dremel tool. I know, like we were saying, it could actually be a helpful duck. Helpful duck. <laughs> and I like the uh, triple endendre of the, the way he named it, yeah. <laughs> entitled Goose. <laughs> Let's see, he's a goose. He's a white goose. <laughs> he's entitled. Oh, look, he's got his bow on. It's where the. Uh, oh, there like he is. That. <laughs> that's cool. It's that is the, really cute. Who put his bow on him? Oh gosh, this is adorable. All right. <laughs> Everybody wants like pet geese now. <laughs> oh, that's oh. a good idea. Make it glow in the dark. Uh, Someone that was holding like drill bits. Oh, ah, the bell. bell. Ah, that's a good idea. Of course. Yeah, cool. so you could definitely scale this up and then I guess just edit the, um, the bill to accept whatever neodymium magnets you'll have around. Sweet. Well, that's this week's community make. Shout out to uh, Guinea. Uh, it's like Gunther. Gunther yeah. Uh, did he remix it or? Is I think it it's a original? remix from a file that he saw on my mini factory. It says right there. Ah. Yeah. And it's actually from a, like a. It's the first paragraph up there. Right here. Is it my mini Sketchfab? Mi Mito oh. Mata's fantastic 3D model. It's on Sketchfab. Definitely go through all model? the uh, remixes too. Some people have made like wings. So you can have attached to the wings to him. Oh yeah, this is different. It looks more polygonal, yeah, like lower polygon. Well, it's a sweet little remix. I'm glad he linked to the original one. And uh, let's see if we can find. Oh, well, there you go. You got at least, at least a link to the source. Mm -hmm. But this is probably not cut up properly it's for uh, printing. Cute. So uh, good job, Gunther, for. Uh, splitting it up and optimizing for 3D printing like that. Yes, yeah, so we're using the white melting PLA and the filamentum gold. Oh no, not filamentum. Oh, I forget the name. Everyone Silky is the name of the brand. Everyone, and it's like the gold silky uh, color okay. that we're using for that guy. Sweet. Hong Kong? Yeah. <laughs> Hong Kong? Oh, uh, clarification on the countdown stuff. Uh, John Park in the chat oh. is saying that it's actually based on the time server on Adafruit IO. Oh, so, so that's it where is it's pulling okay, the, so it the time for that. Okay, cool. Excellent. And he's also printing the goose right now. <laughs> it is such okay. a cute freaking goose. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. And if you want more goosey action, definitely check out John Park's. Last yes, week's project. He has a very cool Untitled Goose like project. He the... became the goose. <laughs> he is the one with the goose. A uh, really cool uh, HID controller oh, yeah. for uh, the Monster Mass task, wasn't it? Yeah. And he's doing the, oh, yeah. uh, using the accelerometer to uh, uh, do button presses on it. So it's super cool. Check that out. You could also honk into it. Like, yes. Honk, and it'll honk. <laughs> very, very fun. Great for accessibility. Mm hmm. And the uh, monster mask uh, that he put in the uh, the mm -hmm. goose mask too has the geese eyes. And yeah, it was a great live stream. Definitely really check it out. Cool, check that out. And one last thing, <laughs> if you guys are looking for that, where is it? <laughs> You're here somewhere. There you are. The uh, blue fruit is indeed in stock. They're and, in uh, stock. There's what? 71 in stock. Yeah. Definitely pick those up. A lot of cool projects coming your way. 
using yeah. wireless yeah. uh, image transferring is coming. Oh my goodness. There's a oh lot of cool stuff coming. Okay, very, very cool. <laughs> Just looking um, like at the future product release, it's like, holy yeah. crap. Uh, all right, well, I think that's gonna be it, folks. We yeah, got I'm a, <laughs> yeah, we got a show and tell tonight. We invite you to come on, please do, if you wanna share your stuff. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't have a finished project, we like seeing progress. Yes. We also like seeing retro tech. So whatever you got, that you mm -hmm. think is interesting, we think it's interesting as well. Definitely stop by for that every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. And right at the end, you'll get a uh, show and tell sticker for participating. That's right. And then after that, shortly after that, uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern time, we got Lamar and Phil doing Ask an Engineer. That's their live stream. We're gonna, they're gonna talk about open source hardware, uh, Circuit Python on hardware, um, just a lot of stuff. And of all course, the news at the end, going on. Yeah, all the news and forthcoming secrets. And then at the end of the show, we're going to open it up the phone lines for folks that can win something. I don't know what it's going to be, but every week it's something really special. So if you want to win something, you can call up Late Ada, and she'll ask you some three magic questions. You answer them, and we will ship it to you from all over the, anywhere in the world. Ship it. For free. No cost. Because then it wouldn't be free. It's Very usually cool. the newest product that is released, so definitely tune is in it? for that. Oh, yeah. Where are you at? Go to products. Go to new. Maybe there's a little. I think mini it'll be a Halloween. I hope it's a Halloween. Oh, the. Maybe it's a display. I don't know. That was last week. Might week's. be the Halloween. It yeah. might be the mini TFT. We don't know. We can't spe We can speculate, but we don't really know. It's up to Lamar. <laughs> Sometimes she changes her mind and she's like, mm, well, let's do this one. And PT's like, what? But that's our only one. She's like, eh. <laughs> I'll make another one. Awesome. Give it up for Lady Ada, folks. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. We'll uh, stay in the chat room, the Discord. You can add us on there at, there it is. what's the address? I always forget. It's uh, discord.gg slash root. That's the invite code. So you can get in there if you haven't uh, set it up. I think it's also ada.fruit or okay. fruit dot Yeah, ada slash .it slash discord. Discord, yeah. That's another one. Honk. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was gonna say, everybody's gonna be honking in the chat rooms now. <laughs> is that gonna be like the most popular uh, Halloween costume? Maybe. Maybe. It's so close to Halloween, I don't think they had enough time to or you just to cash in pillow, on that one. Pillowcase on and <laughs> get that bill. Excellent. Hi, yeah, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah. <laughs> A lot of fun. Thank you guys again, and we'll see you uh, tonight. tonight. Yep. And don't forget, until then, until next time, remember make to make a great, great day. day. Bye, folks. <laughs>